All right, so something funny started happening with my with my pump that pressurizes my whole uh, water system in the house. It started like running like not properly for not long period of time. It started going on and off, on and off, on and off while it was running. And this is the first time I'm experiencing this, so I'm gonna take you through the troubleshooting process with me um, so you can see what I have to do to fix that. Um, okay, so my WAM is in here. And this is the pump I'm talking about. It's a SureFlow Extreme Pro Blaster 24 volt DC pump. And I'm just gonna run my water right now to show you what's happening. So we can see here, once this pre there's a pressure switch, once this gets down to 30 PSI, it's gonna kick on, it's gonna it should pressurize the system back up to 50. But you're gonna see what happens when it gets down to 30, it's not doing that. shoots all the way up to 50 while it's pumping almost to 50 it doesn't make any sense like it should slowly go up until it gets to 50 and once it gets to 50 it starts doing this on and on and on and on it eventually stops turn off my water and make it stop happening Okay, and then once it stops, it jumps all the way back down to like 36 PSI. So, obviously that's a problem. You don't want your pump turning on and off like that. You're gonna destroy your pump. Um, so, what are the possibilities? I started asking myself, why is this happening? Um, so there's a few possibilities. One is, this pressure tank here has a bladder inside of it. I'm actually pressurizing the air around a bladder and then when water goes into the pressure tank, it's filling up a bladder and that bladder is pushing against the, uh, the pressure, the air pressure in the tank. And that's how you can set um, how much water can go into your pressure tank, up to 19 gallons you can fill that bladder with, depending on the PSI that you pressurize the air around it with. So I'm thinking, okay, maybe the pressure in that isn't correct. Well, I checked that. It's got a little, uh, right up here, it's got a little, a little valve and you can like just check the pressure on that like you would like a car tire or bicycle tire and I checked that and that's fine so I know that's not the issue then I looked at I was thinking maybe it's a problem with like you know a clog or something like that but then I thought better about it and uh, I realized well it's probably my filter now the filters in here you got a 60 mesh a 500 mesh a 1000 mesh and you have your drinking water filter, which is like a ceramic, these ceramic candles inside. Now this, the first two filters here are for your domestic water, for washing and bathing, and you can't drink that water. But the thousand mesh and the drinking water filter are used only for drinking water. So it's pretty obvious here which one takes the biggest hit. It's the 500 mesh, the sediment that, uh, is, that gets into the cistern in my situation happens to be just the right size to get through the 60 mesh, but get caught at the 500. So in microns or whatever, it's between 60 and 500 microns, I think, the size of the sediment that I'm dealing with. So it all gets caught here. Um, the last time I cleaned this was about a month and a half ago. That's kind of abnormal. It should probably not be cleaned as often as that. But uh, during monsoon season, when it's raining, you got a lot of new sediment entering the uh, cisterns and it's floating around when you're using your water and you get dirty really fast. So during the drier seasons, you're not gonna have that much of an issue um, uh, with, with this filter clogging up so fast. But this is the culprit. This one always uh, gets clogged first. So I realize that that makes the most sense um, why this is happening. This pump, as you can see, is trying to pump water through the system, through this filter, and then out to the pressure tank. And because this thing is getting clogged up, it can't push the water through it um, it, it, it's going through slower, so this thing starts reading faster as it's pumping, as it's pushing water, it's getting more, it's getting, the water is getting resisted quicker or right away, and that's, that's why this thing is like going straight up to 50 PSI, because it's trying to push it through faster than it can go through, because this is all clogged up. Um, so I'm pretty certain that's the situation, and I'm going to clean uh, these filters right now with you and show you how to do it and then we're gonna see if that fixes it. And if it doesn't fix it, I'm gonna to need to troubleshoot further. 
Uh, so the first thing we need to do is turn off this pump and we need to run our water so that the pressure goes down to zero. And once we get to that point, we can unscrew these filters and clean them and the water won't blast out at us. So I am just gonna run some water. I'm not just gonna waste the water. I'm gonna pour it in some buckets outside and my mixer and things because I'm gonna mix some cement later. So I will uh, be able to use that water for something. When my system is fully pressurized, that tank can hold up to 19 gallons. So I know there isn't more than 19 gallons in there that I gotta dump out to empty the system. So I have five gallon buckets around here and it actually should be a little bit less than 19 gallons because it should be close to 50 PSI. So maybe four buckets should, will definitely cover the amount of water I need to drain out of my system. So I'm also using, when I'm draining the system, I'm using some of that water to fill up a couple bowls because we're gonna need a bowl of clean water and a bowl of soapy water to clean the filters. Now we've just gotten this pressure gauge all the way down to zero. So we know this system is now depressurized and we're ready to unscrew the filters. Got my bucket on hand and I got my towels underneath here and the spin down filters, they just unscrew. They're just hand tightened so I can just, oh man, there we go. Now this is gonna be filled with water so it's gonna drip a little bit and then I'm just gonna dump it right into the bucket. So here is, this is the, uh, the casing for the filter and this is the actual filter. I just need to wiggle out of here. Okay. Take this to the bucket. That's why we put those towels there because it drips. So now we can clean this filter. I'll show you how to do that. I also like to clean this guy as well. Okay, so we put this guy in our cleaning water. You just add some dishwashing detergent, dishwashing soap. You just want to use a mild soap. And then I just use an old toothbrush and gently wash all that off. You can see how dirty that is. Okay, so there we go. This filter is now clean. I'm going to dump it in the rinsing water and I also like just to clean out this guy too. So this filter is now clean. Let's reinstall it. To reinstall you you put the guy partially into the housing and you stick the filter with the gasketed o-ring up into the hole. Get that in there and you can slide this guy up and screw it in. And this is hand tightened, just like that. Don't over tighten this. Okay, make sure this is uh, closed right there. And then we go to the, through the same process for the 60 mesh and for the 1000 mesh filter. The next thing to do is to clean the drinking water filter. And that has a very similar process until the actual cleaning of the filter. That is very different. To loosen this guy, we take this tool and it fits right into that housing there and we loosen it like that. And once it's loosened, we can hand loosen the rest. Oops. Okay. Dump this guy out. Okay, so cleaning the ceramic candles. There's, there is uh, six of them in here, and they need to be cleaned one by one. So they just unscrew, like so. And they're very similar to the, uh, uh, to the, 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 the mesh spin-down filters in that they work the same way. The water comes in. The, the unfiltered water comes in around the periphery of the filter and it gets pumped through the filter and then shoots back out through the center. And this is a gasketed seal right here, shoots back out to the center to the other side of, this, of the filter housing. To fully clean them, you actually need to use an abrasive pad. 
So you use a Scotch Bright pad, and that will actually you basically like sand away the outside layer of the ceramic, um, and that's what that's what cleans it. And you can clean these things up to 50 times. So we just wet a Scotch Bright pad, and then very gently you just scrub them down. If you go if you use two, you got to use not the really abrasive Scotch Brite pad, and you can't. Yeah, you know, I'm not squeezing very hard. I'm going very lightly. You know you've gone too hard if you can, if you look closely at the ceramic and you see little lines and gouges in it. Then you know that you're going too hard and you need to soften up, or you or you need to use a less abrasive pad. Okay, let's rinse this. Let me show you guys a comparison here between a clean and a dirty filter. Dirty and clean, which one is which? It's pretty obvious. The one on the left is dirty, the one on the right is clean. This is what you want it to look like. Now I'm just going to go through the same process for the other five uh, candles. After all the candles are cleaned, I just also like to clean the center spindle and the, uh, and the, like the little distribution cap housing thing as well. So just rub those off, especially this this seal right here. It gets really grimy and just scrub that off. And then also just rinse out this guy too. Now we can uh, reassemble the filters onto the distribution housing, screwing them back in just hand tight not overdoing it. Okay, so you set spindle back into, sets into the housing just like that. It's got a little place where it sits. And then you screw it back in. Get it hand tight. I just like to use the tool. Don't over tighten. Just use the tool to give it a little extra oomph. We're good to go. I actually didn't clean the 60 mesh and the 1000 mesh. They're not very dirty. Um, I'll probably clean them next time. Probably every other time would be fine for those or even every third time if they're not very dirty. Um, now we just turn our main water back on. And once I turn the pump back on, it's gonna pressure, repressurize the whole system. If this thing is working properly now, this should just slowly rise to 50, stop and then stay at 50 or 48. You know, after you've redone all this, if you wanna check for leaks, what I like to do, make sure it's dry. Underneath all the filters, If you notice a little drip underneath, you know something isn't tight enough and you should just tighten it all the way. Okay. So, so that was the problem. We had uh, a clogged filter, which was creating that back pressure. And that's why everything was going funny. Uh, this thing just pressurized to 50, dropped back down to like 48, 49. Once it clicked off, that's totally normal. It's exactly how it should operate. And uh, we're back to normal now. Um, the next thing that we need to do, since we just cleaned all the filters, is I'm just going to run um, the run the domestic water and the drinking water for like a minute each, just to flush out any possible like suds or, or contaminants, whatever that particles that got in there while I was cleaning them. Cloudy. That was just uh, air in the line getting blown out. All right. Problem solved, filters completely cleaned, and uh, we're back to normal. Uh, generally, once every couple months to clean the filters is what's recommended, but I mean, you could just wait till you have a problem like I was having, that could happen. But you know, you, you probably don't wanna wait till you have a problem because once those filters start clogging up, the pump has to work harder to pump the water through and that will lower the, 
a less in the lifetime of your pump. So keeping those filters clean, bef cleaning them before you have a problem, um, during a rainy season, maybe like once a month, uh, during a dry season, once every couple months at the very least, um, during the rainy season, you wanna, you wanna clean them more often because sediment is getting inputted into the cisterns from running off the roof and that sediment is just floating around and when you use your water, it, get the, it goes right into the filter. But when you have dry seasons, all that sediment has a chance to settle down to the bottom of the cisterns and the water that's coming in is cleaner, thus not uh, clogging up the filters nearly as fast. I've never actually been here for long enough during the rainy season with this thing working yet to actually run into this issue. So it was good to see what happens. And now that I know, um, now I know what to do for the future.